Warren. Um, I'm the Outreach Officer for the Portable Antiquities Scheme. Um, and I'm delighted to be here today to be able to talk to you all about the Past Explorers project. But I'd like to start by um, answering the question posed by this session because um, I'm a firm believer that it's everyone's archaeology. Um, we know that participating in heritage activities is good for you. Um, so I feel as heritage practitioners, we've got a duty to um, facilitate facilitate engagement with archaeology wherever we can. Um, so the purpose of my talk today um, is to show that this engagement doesn't have to be at the end of the archaeological process and limited to an outreach event, but that how with um, the right support we've been able to involve the public <coughs> at all stages of our archaeological process. Um, by empowering volunteers with the right tools and training, We've fostered an environment where members of the public are confident um, engaging with archaeology and contributing to the archaeological record. Um, but first, um, a little background to the scheme and to the Past Explorers project. So the Portable Antiquity Scheme is a national, national scheme to encourage the voluntary recording of archaeological finds discovered by members of the public. Um, it was set up in 1997 in response to the introduction of the Treasure Act and the aim was to capture um, information about objects that don't constitute treasure in the legal sense but that are still archaeologically significant. Um, the majority of these finds come from people involved in metal detecting um, but we also get um, finds from people um, hiking, uh, walking the dog, doing gardening, um, doing things like building work. Um, we've even got one object that was discovered by a mole. <laughs> um, the key point is that they're what we call chance finds, so they're not from organised archaeological excavation. Um, the scheme's got a network of 38 finds liaison officers, and they're based at partner organisations across England and Wales, and they're working locally to record finds. To date, over 1.4 million objects have been recorded onto the database, um, that's roughly about 70,000 a year, so it's an, an awful lot of material. In response to the growing number of finds being recorded, we decided to apply some volunteer power. Now, the PAS has always worked with volunteers, but we recognised that we could do so much more if we had um, a dedicated team um, to prioritise the recruitment of volunteers and their training. So. Um, in November 2014, we launched the Past Explorers Project. Um, it's a five-year initiative um, supported by the National Lottery Heritage Fund, and as Gail mentioned, we're in our last year this year. Um, and the aim is to recruit and train volunteers from local communities, to record local finds onto the PAS database, to promote the activities of the PAS to new audiences, and to recruit others to volunteer with the PAS and to engage with um, the history and archaeology of their local area. Um, so it's not just about increasing the scheme's capacity to record finds. Um, we also want to help people learn about the past um, by reaching out to members of local communities and encourage, encouraging them to find out about their local heritage and to share that. So our approach to the project and volunteering as a whole um, is to keep it local, make it flexible and ensure that it's well supported. So in this way, we've tried to create a volunteering experience that's as relevant, engaging, and accessible as possible. Um, so let's look at each of these in more detail. Um, so local approach is a key part of the project ethos. Um, the driver behind the project um, is this idea of finds recording in the local community. Um, so one of our main objectives is the creation of what we've called community finds recording teams. Um, these are organised around each finds liaison officer and then, um, so the flows act as the local volunteer manage managers um, and we provide overall coordination and support from the central unit which is based um, at the British Museum. Um, this local approach is important on a number of levels. So first, um, it's more accessible. Um, travel and the costs involved um, have, are often a barrier to volunteering. And so we can reduce or remove this um, by offering opportunities closer to home. Um, secondly, there's the link between relevance and engagement. So the more relevant something is to somebody, the more engaging they'll find it. And local relevance um, is a good foundation on which to start. 
Um, and it also helps people to build connections to their local area and it helps with this idea of um, sense of place. Um, for us as the scheme, the local model is also the most sustainable approach. Um, so the support and guidance it provides, um, it helps create a team spirit that you wouldn't get if it was all done centrally from the BL. Um, and this um, sense of team spirit is quite important to sustaining volunteer involvement. Um, it's also a structure that can be maintained after the project finishes, um, thanks to the foundations that we've been able to put in place. Um, so the project's leaving behind um, a network of FLOs who've been trained in volunteer management, um, and um, this, this idea of these established teams that um, can support and pass on their knowledge to new recruits. Oops, sorry, I missed one off the bottom there. Yeah. Um, so the nature of the PS partnership model um, requires a certain amount of flexibility. Um, what works in one county and with one partner doesn't necessarily work elsewhere. Um, so we've enabled our FLOs to build their teams and their volunteer teams in a way that suits their individual um, circumstances. Um, and what this means is that all of our FLOs have been able to accommodate volunteering in one form or another. Um, we're also flexible in the types of tasks that our volunteers can do and also in the ways in which they can volunteer with us. Um, broadly speaking, we've got two types of volunteer, um, in-house and remote. Um, so the in-house volunteers does what it says on the tin. They come into the organisation where the FLO is based and they volunteer alongside them. Um, whereas the remote volunteers can work from home. Um, this is usually on the digital tasks. Um, the majority of these are what we call self-recorders, um, so these are detectorists that have been trained um, to record their own finds onto the uh, PAS database. Um, our remotest volunteer, I was trying to think about this, um, is probably a guy named Malcolm who lives all the way up in the Cairngorms. Um, and he volunteers by providing um, identification advice um, and basically improving our records about medieval seal matrices. Um, we found that the remote working approach um, it offers increased opportunities for people to get involved because it takes the need for travel out of the equation completely. Um, it also gives people more flexibility to fit volunteering around um, their co other commitments um, and also to maintain their volunteering if their circumstances change. Um, so for example, if they can no longer physically come in um, but still want to contribute, it just offers another option. We've also been open-minded in terms of what our volunteers can do and we've tried not to limit how they can be involved. Um, we've done this by breaking our process down into a series of tasks and asking um, what skills and support we need to provide um, to enable involvement. Um, this allows the FLOs to assess where they most need help um, and then they can recruit accordingly. Um, the training can then be very focused, um, which means that volunteers can get going a lot quicker as well because um, they're not having to train on everything, um, unless they want to, of course. Um, what we found in practice is that some volunteers are only interested in one um, specific aspect of what we do, such as um, fine photography, um, whereas others want to do a little bit of everything. Um, and often some will start with one task, um, and then they'll expand into other areas. Um, so our approach kind of um, provides room for growth as well. Um, but overall, by taking this task-based approach, we've been able to include more volunteers in more aspects of what we do. So, of course, this wouldn't be possible without adequate support. Um, we make sure our volunteers are fully supported in what they do, and this takes um, three forms. Um, so there's the day-to-day -day support, um, there's support through training, and then there's support through the provision of opportunities to share knowledge. As mentioned earlier, um, each volunteer is part of a local finds recording team, um, and that in turn is part of the wider connected PAS network. Um, so this setup provides them with the social support of being part of a local team, um, but also the reassurance of a wider pool of knowledge that they can um, tap into for advice. Um, so for example, we've got an online forum um, which connects volunteers to uh, uh, FLOs and volunteers in other areas. Our training programme then um, supports volunteers by providing the skills and knowledge um, to participate fully in the finds recording process. Um, we designed our training programme to be modular, 
Um, so it's all part of the flexible nature of the project. Um, some volunteers come to just the modules they want to or need to, um, whilst others come to the full programme. We deliver the training regionally, um, so rather than expecting the volunteers to come all the way down to the British Museum for every session, which is difficult for somebody like Malcolm up in the Cairngorms, for example, um, we take the training out to them. So again, it's about making it as successful as we can. Um, it also means that we can adapt the content um, to make it relevant to the region in which they're volunteering. Um, so things like pottery, for example, have got a very strong regional variation and we can accommodate this. Um, the training is accompanied by um, loads of in-depth resources, um, including our online for, um, finds recording guides. Um, these are accessible from any web browser, so it means that the, um, the volunteers don't have to be in the office to access these. Um, it also means, um, so they're on a WordPress platform, um, so they're really easy to update with new developments as well. Um, another key element, and I think one of the more important ones, um, is the provision of opportunities and a platform um, for volunteers to be able to share their work. Um, so this platform is the County Pages section of our website, and this is um, it's essentially like a hub for local information um, about the PAS and about archaeology of the area. Um, every county's got its own county page. Um, it includes a blog <coughs> where volunteers can... Um, share their work, share their research, and, and news alongside content from their local FLO. So it's, again, it's very much a team effort. Um, we're also working on a skills matching section of the county pages. Um, so volunteers will be able to um, create a profile, um, upload their skills, and then these can be matched to tasks that are uploaded by the FLOs and vice versa. Um, we also provide support um, by sharing the work of our volunteers through our various social media platforms. Um, and we encourage them to research the things they're interested in um, and, and also provide opportunities and support to them, um, give talks, uh, write research papers um, and present at conferences. Um, and I think that's something that should be open to volunteers more widely. And um, so I've got up here, um, Tom is a metal detectorist. Um, he got really interested in a really weird type of med medieval buckle um, and did quite a lot of research into it. Um, it's a type that has only come to light through the PAS. Um, and he, um, well, he's presented a paper at our conference <coughs> last year in this picture. Um, he also wrote the typology for that uh, buckle type and he published a data sheet for the Finds Research Group um, and all with the support of his local FLO. Um, and actually, his typology is the one that we use um, on the database for identifying that type of um, object. Um, so I think showing encouragement and appreciation for our, our volunteers lets them know that their contribution is valued. Um, and I think this is vital in creating a great volunteering experience. Promoting the research is one way that we do this. Um, we also offer behind the scenes um, tours and days at the British Museum. Um, and then of course the FLOs regularly support, um, show encouragement and support through things like you know, bringing in cakes and that sort of thing. Um, I was once told never underestimate the importance of cake. <laughs> and so in essence, um, what we've tried to do with Past Explorers Project is to um, support our volunteers with the tools, training and opportunities to contribute to their local archaeology in the way that they want to. Um, and this just sort of summarises how it all fits into the bigger picture. Um, so it's a continuous cycle of support and facilitation um, that all feeds back into the scheme and our aims. Um, but what does this model look like in practice? Happy volunteers! <laughs> um, so it looks like um, volunteers who are involved in a range of activities at all levels of the finds recording process. So finding and reporting, identification and recording, research and dissemination. <coughs> um, these are just some of the tasks that our volunteers are involved in. And um, so it ranges from writing records to presenting at conferences and everything in between. Um, some of the volunteers just do one of these tasks. Um, Others um, take on a variety depending on what their particular interest is. 
And the point is that we've um, created an environment in which they have the flexibility to do this. And it also looks like volunteers from a range of backgrounds and levels of experience. Um, so we've got a fairly even split of sexes, so um, it's almost 50-50. 30% -50. Um, of our volunteers are over the age of 60. Um, some are already involved in archaeology, while others are looking to just do something a bit different in their spare time. The majority fall into one of three groups, although obviously there's a bit of overlap. Um, so these are students that are volunteering as part of their studies or to gain a little bit of work experience in the sector. Um, metal detectorists who want to learn more about the stuff they're finding um, and who are also recording their own finds into the database. Um, and also people that are retired um, and they're either looking for something new to get involved in or they've got a background in archaeology and they want to keep their toe in. Um, so by volunteering for us they could use their specialist knowledge to improve our records and to provide identi identification advice. <coughs> so I've already mentioned Malcolm up in the Cairngorms but um, there are many others and, who are experts in their field and they volunteer their time and their knowledge to help us out. And then at the other end of the scale, we've got volunteers who've got no prior interest or knowledge in archaeology um, before they started volunteering with us. Um, so, for example, one of our volunteers down in Dorset, um, she got involved because she was out walking her dog um, and she came across a flint hand axe just out on the path. <laughs> um, she took it into her local flow um, and got completely hooked on Olympics. Um, and she now identifies and records um, most of the flint for the county. Um, we've also got Des, who's a retired army chef, um, and he wanted something to do when he retired and looked on his local volunteering page, saw our opportunity and thought it looked a little bit interesting. Um, and in his own words, he's never looked back. Um, and here he is um, giving a paper on finds from the North East at our conference last year, which again, he's admitted is something that he never ever thought he'd do. Um, so you can see their motivations for volunteering with us are just as varied as their backgrounds. Um, it ranges from skills acquisition to rehabilitation, um, a distraction from everyday life or just the chance to do something different. Um, making the effort to understand these motivations uh, helps us to keep our volunteers interested and engaged and of course it feeds back into our recruitment process. And so if we know why people are getting involved, um, we can improve our offer and we can expand the places in which we look for volunteers. Um, and finally, it looks like volunteers who stay with us and return for repeat volunteering. And so I feel that longevity of volunteering is a good indicator that we're providing you know, a, a welcoming environment and somewhere that people want to be. Um, and some of our volunteers have been with us a very long time, as you can see. Um, some of them predate the project, in fact. Um, we've also got a good number of volunteers who do sort of short stints at a time, and, but keep coming back. Um, so a lot of students, for example, they'll volunteer in the holidays and then pause their volunteering um, during term time. Um, and the key is that we've got the flexibility to accommodate volunteering um, in all its shapes and forms. Um, and I actually think this diversity of volunteering is um, the key to maintaining a sustainable system. So the long-term volunteers bring continuity, and this is complemented by the short-term placements. I could stand here and sort of keep telling you how great it is to volunteer for us, um, but I thought you might prefer to hear from the volunteers themselves. And so I've just got a short video that um, one of our volunteers up in Lincolnshire put together. Um, you might have to turn the volume up because it was a bit quiet earlier. Oh, I just thought it would be a lovely idea to, to carry on learning. And um, I get so much pleasure from looking back at um, some of the artefacts and recording them. Nicole came out of volunteers and I volunteered. Um, I enjoy coming on a Friday afternoon, meeting up with everybody else and having a good chat, but also learning new things, 
seeing different objects, things that I've never seen before, never even heard of, and um, feeling that I'm part of a bigger organisation. Um, I enjoy, I really enjoy particularly the behind the scenes uh, opportunities that we've had, not only to handle all these artefacts every week, but, but also a really trip to the British Museum where you have behind the scenes experts showing us these wonderful artefacts that nobody would ever get to see, and we've got those two, it's absolutely marvellous and a privilege. It was a good opportunity to actually see um, different things that have been found because when we're doing the digs we tend to find ceramics whereas with the portable antiquity scheme um, we're looking at more metal objects. I think it's important in the time to do something that keeps you mentally active and this is the ideal, uh, the ideal uh, thing to do um, in that respect and to keep the school. Uh, quite a lot to be apart from the camaraderie and the social mix and meeting new people. I've also learned a lot of stuff about archaeological finds and um, the types of eras and an awful lot of good stuff that's come both on the specialist and from the other volunteers. Personally, I get the satisfaction of handling all these marvellous artifacts that you're going to get to handle. But also meeting the team as well, it's a great um, camaraderie, a great team spirit and to be involved in the future. It's given me a regular Friday afternoon time to come, so that's really good in my retirement, and meeting up with other people who have similar interests and just learning more all the time is great. Well, I particularly enjoy it, that's the, that's the crucial thing. But I also feel I'm making a valuable contribution to the, the, the country's heritage, and particularly the county's heritage, of course. It makes me feel valued and I'm making a sort of contribution towards the knowledge of the history of geology and doing something useful for the economy. On the university, because I was student at the university, I was able to uh, spend any of my time here. Uh, get involved in the award and achieve the um, uh, gold award for volunteering as a result of being part of the city board. So that's really an achievement for me uh, in the future and going to see more. Well, I think it's, um, it's certainly about my computer skills and across the, the skills involved in the identifying and describing uh, a number of uh, wide range of different artifacts. Give me a new sort of um, area to research, really, because I've got access to the uh, database, and from that, I've actually used that in other activities to actually search for things that I want to find. Um, it's given me an idea about how the database is used um, by people. So, um, if they want to know how many coins are being found in a specific area, they can search the database. It's a lovely group to belong to, and I learned so much from everyone else, which I think is so helpful, unbelievably helpful, um, and it's made a big difference. And I've done very, very slowly learning to put information on the database, which I really enjoy doing. Um, yeah, a big thank you to Stuart, who um, to be a fan of the Zoom function, um, <laughs> very kindly put this video together for us. Um, so I'd like to just finish quickly by um, summarising what I think are the, the, um, the main benefits of our approach and also to involving the public at, in as many stages as we can. Um, I think first and foremost, um, we can provide an opportunity to work, oh, so yeah, I want to, you know, not just the benefits for us, but for the volunteers too. Um, so yeah, first and foremost, um, we provide this opportunity to work closely with archaeological finds and this alone seems to be um, a really big motivator for our volunteers. Um, volunteering for us gives increased knowledge and understanding of the past um, and the opportunity to work with the archaeological community. Our training programme provides opportunities to meet subject experts and to network with other volunteers from across the scheme. It also gives increased confidence to contribute to the archaeological process uh, by giving reassurance through training and ongoing support. Um, as 
one of our volunteers mentioned, this can bring um, skills and experience for the CV. Um, so a good number of our volunteers have actually left us because they've gained employment. And actually 11 out of our 38 flows um, are either former volunteers or in interns with the scheme. And um, so I kind of feel this, it, it kind of shows how successful our training programme is at least. Um, volunteering for us also offers um, support platforms and opportunities to engage in uh, further research and sharing of knowledge. Um, so we provide somewhere encouraging and accessible for our volunteers to publish their research. Um, and it also gives them access to our large audience base through social media, our on online blogs and also um, at conferences. Um, but based on what the volunteers said in the videos, um, I think the biggest benefit to them is the opportunity to make what they called was a valued contribution. Um, so the data that they provide through their volunteering um, can be used almost instantaneously um, by anybody anywhere in the world. Um, so they can see their work being used in other archaeological projects um, to advance archaeological knowledge. Um, and this gives a sense of contributing to something important and knowing that the work is both um, useful and appreciated, um, which I think is really important in the volunteering experience. Um, I've been a volunteer myself, and there's nothing worse than being given busy work. Um, for the PAS, um, the benefits are enormous. Um, so it means more finds being recorded onto the database. Um, there's also been a marked improvement in the quality of the database records, um, which is really important because um, with preservation by record, which is what we essentially do, um, the data is everything, so it needs to be good quality data. Um, it's helped us to promote best practice amongst finders, um, because a lot of our volunteers, um, many of them are detectorists themselves, so they take the skills and knowledge that they learn um, back to the groups and clubs that they belong to. Um, volunteers also feed their research and knowledge back into the scheme. Um, so this helps us to improve the data set um, with new developments and it also generates content for our platform. So it helps us to keep reaching out. Um, it helps us to reach more people and hopefully encourages them to get involved too because they can see the opportunities it provides. And it's created an army of advocates, not just for the scheme, but for archaeology as a whole. Um, and that can only be a good thing. But I think for me as an outreach officer, um, the most important benefit um, for us as a publicly funded scheme is simply in doing the right thing. Um, as heritage practitioners, um, we must provide opportunities and facilitate meaningful engagement because at the end of the day, it's everyone's archaeology. Um, thank you.